What's up everyone? Mark Lobliner, CEO, MTS Nutrition. I remember old people since the beginning of my life, since I was a young, young child, were advised to take aspirin every single day to prevent their chance of having heart disease. I never understood this. Now, if you guys have followed me for, for the past few years, one of my good friends, Gary Rinal, is actually the anti-ice man. He is against anti-inflammatories because what happens when you take anti-inflammatories like aspirin, any NSAID, ibuprofen, things like that, is they actually work very well. They are anti-inflammatories, meaning they take down inflammation. But inflammation is your body's natural response. It's a good thing. Not only does it, let's say you sprain your ankle, it prevents it from moving to prevent further injury, but it also allows your body to flood out, to just get out all the nasty byproducts of that injury and clear it out. And that's when the healing can begin, delivering nutrients and clearing out all the inflammation from the damage. Okay, so I've always been, or at least in the recent you know, history, against NSAIDs when you get injured. So let's say you sprain an ankle or you tear a muscle. Last thing you wanna do is take an anti-inflammatory because that inflammation is a necessary response for healing. And when you take an anti-inflammatory, you actually um, prolong the recovery process. And actually, I'm gonna link an article down below that I wrote on why you should never ice or take anti-inflammatories. Back to old people. Actually, I'm gonna open up my computer here. This is an article, actually on NBC News. Daily aspirin may be harmful for healthy older adults, large study finds. No detectable benefits seen from regular use of low-dose aspirin for people 70 and older who don't have heart disease, people say. So here's the thing, not only is it not gonna help, it might also be harmful. So basically they took daily low dose aspirin and there were two groups. So one group took it and at the end of the trial, 90.3% of the aspirin treated patients were still alive compared to 90.5% of those who received placebos. So the trial was actually 19,114 seniors, 2,411 from the US, 16,703 from the Australians, and it was an average of 4.7 years. And of course, the minimum age was for, for, for Caucasians, 70 and 65, also had African American and Hispanic volunteers. So why am I doing this? One, because we're showing complete lack of knowledge on how to actually prevent things. We do these correlative things, or maybe we just think beyond what's pretty simple. Now, for older people, rather than shoving an anti-inflammatory in their body, the thought of it is it thins your blood. So if it thins your blood, they're thinking that'll be better for your heart. But in reality, it doesn't work that simplistically. It does not. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, first of all, we actually know how to help people live longer lives. We know how to help people prevent type 2 diabetes and other diseases like obesity that will cut your life expectancy dramatically. We know how to do this, guys. Exercise. If you simply have an elderly person participate in cardiovascular and resistance training, not only will you increase their chance of having a more productive, longer life, but you will also prevent a lot of these diseases. For example, type two diabetes, resistance training, it's effect on how your body handles um, glucose and carbohydrate, glute force, that's all there. And then healthy diet. Look, I understand, you get old, you're not quite worried about having that extra cheese on your cheeseburger, that extra bacon on your Baconator. However, as you get older, you need to pay attention. Am I getting enough fruits, enough vegetables? Am I getting enough lean protein? Because muscle wasting is an issue at that age. Also, keep in tune with your hormone. Hormone replacement therapy for older males. Hormone replacement therapy for older females. We have ways to get around this, but we keep looking for things that just won't make sense. And giving aspirin, and I've always questioned this, and now there's actually data to show it, giving aspirin daily to people, an anti-inflammatory, which I believe will decrease their healing and everything else going on because of its blood thinning properties. This study just shows me this is, I don't need any more studies on this because I thought it was silly to begin with. Right now, we have proof that not only is it such an insane 90.3 versus 90.5, statistically insignificant, right? However, 
it's enough to tell me this is bullshit. So if you're elderly, we do have some watching this channel, or if you're someone who has a parent, grandparent, or whatever doing this, be sure to show them this study, show them this video, and of course, get them to the gym. Or don't get them to the gym. Have them take a leisurely walk around the neighborhood. Have them, you know, go on a bike ride. We can prevent a lot of age-related diseases. But aspirin isn't the answer. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Mark Lobon. I'm going to link the uh, article I wrote on anti-inflammatories down below, as well as the article by NBC News. Appreciate you watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and that's not a game.